most excellent to see you. We got another great episode of On Top and Hot for you. I'm John Zadar, and this is the final weekend of July. It is July 30th, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> so what do we do on this show? Come on, you know what we do. We focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, when I do my due diligence looking for a hot penny stock, I don't do it looking at the press releases and the filings. I know most do, but I have seen a lot of big news fall flat on its face because of a cold chart. So I'm looking for charts that have heat. I'm looking for a chart that has a lot of volume coming in. That tells me more interest is being paid to the company. More people are watching it. Or I'm looking for a chart that has a breakout set up. A lot of people are going to be paying attention to that. Or maybe it's just had a wild run for a while or some huge bounces back to back. Anything that makes that chart look like it wants to run, that's a hot chart. Now I'm going to go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for that match to set that chart on fire. When I find it, that's a stock I'm interested in and that's a stock I want to share with you. Well, today I've got one stock I want to share with you that just came back up on my radar. I was quite aware of this stock back in 2020, made some nice bank on this, and she is back up and running and looking good. This is Toon, ticker T-O-O-N, Cartoon Studios. Now, she just changed her name and her ticker June of this year, used to be Genius Brands, ticker G-N-U-S, and they did a reverse split dropping from 320 million shares down to 32 million shares. It was a one in 10 reverse split, which is great at this point of the game. We're coming in after it's all done, but it has caused us some problems, which I'm gonna share with you here in just a minute. So let's get a little information about the company, and then I wanna give you some history about what I know about this company, and then we'll catch up with what's going on right now. So a basic description of this company we get from the uh, chief executive officer, Andy Hayward. He tells us here that the name change reflects the core DNA of the company, which is making high quality and socially responsible animated cartoons for children and teens, distributing them worldwide and licensing consumer products, toys, pillows, anything based on the character images. First thing I want to do is let you know that the charts are not accurate. We can't trust all the information on the charts because they change them. I don't know who, FINRA, the SEC, but they changed it to accommodate the reverse split on February 13th. When you see a reverse split, it will happen pre-market on that day. If it was a 1 in 10 reverse split going from 20 cents, you will see a green bar go from 20 cents up to 2 bucks. 20 times 10 is two. And that green bar is on the charts for everybody to see. Well, when we go and look at February 13th, there's no green bar there. There's a big red bar and it's falling. And worse than that, if you go back in the history of the chart, back to, well, let's just say 2020 in June, they tell us the high was $117. It never broke $17 in June. Not once. And now the charts are telling us it's $117 back then. That's not right. How can we use this information to make logical decisions? Now, with regard to the charts changing and the prices not being right, I've jumped on over here to financecharts.com where we can get a history, a daily reading of their highs, their lows, openings, closings for the last few years. Now, I've scrolled back here to May and June of 2020 because this is when I made my first initial purchase into GNUS. It was May 26th, 2020. I bought 500 shares of GNUS for $1.53. About two weeks later, June 9th, I sold those shares at a profit of $4.05. Now look over here. They tell us on June 9th, 2020, when I sold my shares for $4.05, that it opened up at $39.70, and they hit a high of $46 that day. Do you really think I would have sold my shares for $4 if they were at $40? No way. See, what they did is they actually multiplied the price from back then up 10 times. 
The price on June 9th, 2020 was $4.60 at her high, not $46. But anybody who's not aware of what they've done is going to be thinking it really did hit $46 on that day. And that's just plain wrong. I'm very unhappy to see that happen to our charts. Now, this was a running stock back then. She was coming out with all kinds of news. She was distributing her cartoons on a lot of different platforms. She was with Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Comcast, Roku, Hallmark. She was getting out there and she was getting products in stores. She had just made deals with Walmart and Target. So the stock was running hot. And then all of a sudden, bam! we hit a brick wall. The brick wall was called Hindenburg Research, a lot like Citron. Both of these are self-proclaimed companies that are shorters. That's what they do. They short the market and they let everybody know it. And this is a professional group, Hindenburg Research. They do a lot of due diligence and research into a lot of companies looking for skeletons in the closet, dirty laundry, facts that can turn the investors off. And they put all that information into a vault and they lock it down until one of those start, start to run. When they start to run, they break out this news. They've got it going out syndicated. So it's out everywhere very fast and boom, the stock comes falling down fast. Well, when GNUS started running after a few days, Hindenburg came out with this letter right here. And normally they do have bad news, really harsh stuff to say about the company. And you want to get out after you read it. Well, this was nothing like that. It is very long. He has a lot of nitpick information, but basically he's landing it all on one foundation. The company itself appears to agree with us, believing its shares are worth 35 cents to a dollar 20 per share. And that's all he said. And he repeated this over and over with a little bit of information here and there to explain why he feels that. But he kept falling back on the company itself says the stock's not worth any more than that. And that's when it fell. And it's been a long time since anything's happened. And as I said, she's just come back onto my radar because not only is she expanding fast and furiously, but she's making money now, not just a little, it's taking a huge jump. So let's go get some more information about this company. So we're going to keep on keeping on with our research over here at the company's website, cartoonstudios.com. Now, one of the things I really appreciate about this company is they are constantly recruiting top tier talent, not just for their cartoons, but for their management as well. On the entertainment side of the coin, we've got names like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's Arnie right there. We have Shaquille O'Neal. And would you believe Warren Buffett? This company is actually making cartoons, teaching our kids the value of investing. How great is that? But they are also recruiting top tier talent in their management. I don't know if they're head hunting or what, but they are getting top notch execs from primo big media corporations. I don't know how they're doing it, but they are literally building themselves a dream team, which is quite impressive. So the company is headquartered in the prestigious Beverly Hills of California, but they've also got offices in New Jersey, Toronto, Vancouver, and London. Now they were trading as genius brands under the ticker GNUS right up until June of 2023 when they changed their name to Cartoon Studios, changed their ticker to TOON, and changed themselves from the NASDAQ to the New York Stock Exchange. And they did this for a very good reason. They wanted to be on the same playing field with their competitors. This is where all the media production companies are at. Netflix, Walt Disney, Spotify, Warner Brothers, Roku, everybody's over here. And Toon is the new guy on the block with a market cap under everybody by a long ways. Toon is at $62.9 million market cap where every other company here is well into the billions. So we've got a lot of room to grow over here. And that's what they're doing right now. They are growing. They tell us down here that Tune Media Networks is a globally distributed entertainment platform with 100% penetration in the US television market and is now being seen in more than 60 territories worldwide. 
via satellite, cable, and terrestrial, as well as streaming in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Latin America, and Asia. Toon Media Network consists of the Cartoon Channel and Federator Network and Amoeba. Are you ready for this list? It is impressive, and I don't think this is exhausted. Cartoon Channel is available across multiple platforms, including iOS, Android Mobile, the web, Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, Pluto TV, Comcast, Cox, Dish, Sling TV, Android TV, oh my God, Tubi, Exumo, Samsung, and LG Smart TVs. They're everywhere, folks. Now, Frederator Network, they own and operate the largest global animation network on YouTube with channels that boast over 2,000 exclusive creators and influencers, garnering on average over a billion views every month. Amoeba, this is a children's video streaming service that is full of active, engaging, and intelligent programming. Now, to be completely honest, I don't know a lot about these cartoons. I haven't watched most of them. I have watched one a lot. I'll tell you which one that is when we get to it. But they do give us a preview down here of some of their most popular cartoons. And I can't tell you a lot about them. This one is Shaq's Garage. This is Shaquille O'Neal's cartoon. And this is a lot like the Cars from Walt Disney. Another one they got here comes from Wolfgang Puck. This is the Secret Chef Academy. Hopefully they're teaching our kids how to cook. Wouldn't that be convenient? Another one of their popular cartoons is Stan Lee's Superhero Kindergarten. This is the one that stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, are you familiar with Stan Lee? No? Well, I bet you know his work. He created all of the Marvel superheroes. Batman, Superman, Aquaman, The Hulk, Wonder Woman, all of them, they all came out of his brain. Now, he passed away. He is gone, but his company continues, Stan Lee Universe. And the way I understand it, this company has that company now. And they get all the IP post Stan Lee's death, <laughs> which means they have no rights to the superheroes before he died. So you're thinking, well, how's any more going to come out if Stan Lee's dead? Well, he's got a corporation. There's a company with a think tank of people in there, and they've already created a whole bunch of new superheroes, and they all belong to this company, as far as I can tell. Another one of their popular cartoons is Llama Llama. This is based on a book series by Anna Dudney, and this is being streamed on Netflix. Another one of their cartoons is Rainbow Rangers. Don't know anything about this one. They have Baby Genius. I know everything about this one. I watched this for a couple years. When my son was a baby, one, two, three years old, this was on a lot. Most of what we watched was the classical music ones. They would have Mozart or Beethoven or Tchaikovsky music playing, and then they'd have all these pictures a baby would enjoy. A dancing bear, uh, a roller coaster, puppies, whatever. We watched that for a long time. That sort of music helps the brain, and the pictures made them smile. I love Baby Genius. We got two more here, Thomas Edison's Secret Lab. This is a STEM-based adventure comedy available on our Kid Genius channels. Includes 52 episodes featuring original music. And the last one we got here, Secret Millionaires Club. This is the one being hosted by Warren Buffett. Created with and starring iconic investor Warren Buffett, Secret Millionaires Club teaches kids lessons in financial literacy. Special guests include Jay-Z, Bill Gates, Shaquille O'Neal. Now, the last thing I want to show you before we go look at some basic information about the stock are the price targets for this company. So we've actually got two price targets for Cartoon Studios over the last 60 days. Here in July, we got one from Dawson James Securities. They set a price target of $10. And then back in June, Tip Ranks gave us a price target of $12.50. You're looking at a minimum of roughly 400% gains if she hits those price targets. 
Now the chart right now is very low. It's looking pretty wimpy. But the revenues aren't looking wimpy. Their expansion around the world is looking strong and we've got some nice price targets. So I'm thinking now is a good time to look at her because I think she's itching to run. Let's run on back over to the OTC markets to get some general information on that stock. We are now taking a look at the relative volume from Friday for Cartoon Studios, ticker T-O-O-N. Ow! Oh, that's got to hurt. We lost about 70% of our average volume on Friday, dropping from 813,000 shares down to 231,000 shares. Definitely off the radar of a lot of investors, but I'm thinking it's time to put it back on. Share structure for the company is much improved since that 1 in 10 reverse split February 13th. She was up at 320 million shares. We are now down to 32 million shares, which is excellent. The float, I haven't got a clue what it is, but I'll bet you it's much improved as well. Speaking of much improved, look at those financials. We got a big kick from 2021 to 2022. In 2021, she did $7.8 million worth of business. We know it's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. But look, she lost twice that much. She lost $14 million in 2021. In 2022, things changed a lot. She added $55 million to her revenue, jumping from $7 million up to $62 million. And she is now taking profits. She gained about $13 million in 2022. Quarterly, she did drop from the last quarter of 2022 to the first quarter of 2023, about $5 million. But look at the profit margin. I would rather make less money and bring in profits than to make more money and bring in no profits. So this is looking good. Let's take a look at that balance sheet on the annual. Cash and cash equivalents, they've got roughly $7.5 million in the bank. You've got to add three zeros to any of these numbers as well. They've got 83 million in short-term investments. Total assets, $237 million. Total liabilities, $126 million. So they are way ahead of the game. Taking a look at those disclosures. We do have a couple of disclosures here I want to share with you. This S3, it has some pertinent information. Now some of this we've tagged on to, but not much. They give us a big list here about every place that they are showing their stuff, but they didn't tell us all. They tell us here we also licensed our program to other services worldwide, in addition to the operations of our own channels, including, but not limited to, Netflix, HBO Max, Paramount Plus, Nickelodeon, and satellite, cable, and terrestrial broadcasters around the world. Through our investments in Germany's Your Family Entertainment, a publicly traded company on the Frankfurt Exchange, we have gained access to one of the largest animation catalogs in Europe with over 50 titles consisting of over 1,600 episodes and a global distribution network which currently covers over 60 territories worldwide. Through the ownership of WOW Unlimited Media, we established an affiliate relationship with Mainframe Studios, which is one of the largest animation producers in the world. In addition, WOW owns Frederator Networks and its Channel Frederator Network, the largest animation-focused multi-channel network on YouTube with over 2,500 channels. We have rights to select an amount of valuable intellectual property, including among them a controlling interest in Stan Lee Universe, through which we control the name, likeness, signature, and all consumer product IP rights to Stan Lee. We also own Beacon Media Group, the largest media buying service for children in North America. Beacon represents over 30 major toy companies, including Playmobil, Bandai Toys, Bazooka, Moose Toys, and Jack's Pacific. And folks, that's really where they're making the other end of their money. For all the characters that they're developing, it is to sell products, pillowcases, stuffed animals, toothpaste, anything, anything that draws the attention of the kids. And that's what they're working on right now. They are getting lots of products into the stores. In addition, we own the Canadian company Amoeba Inc., which distributes a profitable 
SVOD service for kids and has become the focal point of revenue growth for Genius Network subscriptions offerings. This is streaming on demand. You get to pull up any movie you want like Netflix. The other filing we have to take concern with came out July 25th. They are exercising 4.7 million warrants. What this means is the warrants are going to disappear and in their place will be brand new shares, 4.7 million of them. And these are going to be added to the outstanding share count, which will kick it up from 32 to about 37 million. Still not a bad share count. Looking at the news. Now, as you've probably already guessed, the company has a lot of press releases. They've got a lot of cartoon shows they're putting on a lot of various platforms around the world. So we've got lots of press releases and I'm not going to go through all of those. I'm going to save those for you. I'm going to pick this up down here on June 26th. This is when they changed their name, changed their ticker and moved from the NASDAQ over to the New York Stock Exchange. The next piece of news comes out July 10th. The company's premiere of Shaq's Garage, starring Shaquille O'Neal, outperforms during June's exclusive on Pluto TV. I'm telling you folks, their cartoons are very popular with kids. You know who else is popular? Stan Lee. They tell us here that Legible and Cartoon Studios to develop 12 original Stan Lee comic book series. Cartoon Studios announces Stan Lee Comics, based on never-before-released stories and characters created by Stan Lee. This is impressive, folks. We're getting stuff from the late Stan Lee. He's already dead, and we're getting new characters from him. Obviously, he did this before he died. They tell us up here that Cartoon Studios, through its controlling interest in Stan Lee Universe, partners with digital leader Vivi for Stan Lee Digital Collectibles, launched on July 18th. And the last piece of news we got here came out on the 25th. Cartoon Studios enters Malaysian market with Cartoon Channel branded block of shows on Astro in August 2023. So we read in this press release that the company is continuing the Pacific Asia expansion of the Cartoon Channel brand with their August premiere of a branded programming block of shows for Astro Sierra. This is Malaysia's number one homegrown kids channel. Now, because of the worldwide success of Cartoon Channel's hit elimination style reality game for kids called Kidiverse Roblox Rumble, Astro has determined they're going to license the format and produce Series 2 just for Malaysian contestants. The series features a diverse group of girls and boys between the ages of 8 and 12 who compete in 10 different Roblox games to win prizes and then find out who is the ultimate gamer for a grand prize. You know the kids are loving this. So this is a lot more than just watching cartoons. They have interactive TV. They have contests where you're actually competing against other children. You're winning prizes. They've got revenues coming in a lot stronger now plus profits. They are in over 60 countries, have saturated America, and they are still expanding. I honestly can't see how this company can fail. Cartoon channels are big business. When I go to Netflix and I want to watch a movie but I don't know what I want to watch, I pull up the search bar and I throw in one letter. I throw in an N. Do you know I see 10 times as many cartoons as I do movies? The cartoon market is huge and this company's got everything going on except that chart that chart needs to get going let's go take a look at it so let's take a look at ticker t-o-o-n and we're going to do this on t-o-s <laughs> that's my free trading platform think or swim you get it free when you sign up with td ameritrade and that's free too so we are looking at Cartoon Studios, ticker T-O-O-N, and I've got us all the way back to 2020. So you can see that big run that I was telling you about, the one I banked on. Now the chart looks right, the bars look right, but the numbers are messed up. This number is the only one that looks right to me. 52 cents down here. Now she started pushing up at around 64 cents. About three or four days later, I bought in at $1.53. Well, they're telling us the price is up near $15. That ain't right. You know what else ain't right? That high bubble. They tell us we hit an ultimate high of $117. I don't think we ever hit even $17, to be honest. 
So the chart looks right, but the numbers are all wrong. And that is just pure misleading. That's false information. Why do they do this? You and I are aware of it now, but most people are not going to be aware that they have changed the charts to accommodate a reverse split. I don't think it's fair. It really makes me upset. So let's come on down to that current time, six month, four hour view, and we're going to try to trust this chart. So we got a high bubble back here at the end of November of $8.10 and a big drop down to $1.77 that she hit July 13th. Right here, this is our reverse split. This should be a green line pushing up, not a red line pushing down. Now the chart looks ugly and you can't even tell where the reverse split is unless you're aware of that red bar. So let's come on down over here to current time, see what's going on. We had a lot of volume here before the low bubble. She had actually broke out over that 200 starting here at $2.39 and hitting a high of $3.92 and then falling fast and hard down to that low bubble. She's bounced off that low bubble. She got over a 50 day SMA, but then she fell back underneath it. And right now she looks so planted, so calm. She's going sideways between two strong SMAs. All of our oscillators are going sideways. There's nothing really happening here. And you can't count the ADX. It doesn't count right now. Let's come on over to that 20 day, one hour view. Well, that looks a little better. She's bounced off that low bubble of $1.77 got over that 50 and went straight to the 200. She tagged it, hit in a high of $2.37. She went sideways and she's beating her head on this 200. She fell away right when it's gone flat. Look at how flat that is. She came back up, she's crested it with a little bit of break and now she's fallen down to the 50 without any energy to see. All of our oscillators are flat. There is just nothing going on here, but there is a lot going on, just not on the charts. Five day, five minute. So we got a low bubble here of $1.88. She broke the 200. She was falling that 200 and now she's rolling up and she's kind of going sideways. She hit this high of $2.07, fell fast and furious this day down to a low of $1.92 and now she's come up and she is banging her head on that 200 looking like she's getting higher highs all the way until the very end of the day. Then she fell away. Oscillators are looking weak right now. Now folks, I normally like to show you stocks that have hot charts, but I remember this stock running. I remember it coming from nowhere and just launching. And this is looking like the same thing. She's got lots of news, revenues all over the world. She's growing and she looks like she could pop. The charts don't look it, but everything else does. So I'm counting on what I've already been through in 2020. I think we could get a replay here, folks. T-O-N-N, -N, it belongs on your watch list, definitely. But do some more research. You know I didn't cover everything. I told you that right up front. The more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya, folks. Para pa 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 pa